Hey guys, uh, this is Country Pot Hicks, and uh, today I'm actually doing a little bit of hewing. Now, uh, hewing is a really, really old traditional way of uh, making boards and beams before sawmills were around. Um, in fact, a lot of people actually see a lot of examples of really good hewing. Um, railroad ties are probably the best example. Um, back then, they were made by tie hackers and were hewed. Now, the reason we're making this video is to show that hewing is actually a practical way of making small scale lumber without a Alaskan sawmill or even a sawmill. Um, it's actually not as time consuming as people think. It is time consuming, but not as bad as people think. And I got my log here. I've actually done a little bit of hewing as you can already see. Now, real quick, when you hear about hewing, people say that you need a felling axe. This is not a felling axe. This is a pack axe, um, a broad axe, and a chipping axe. That is absolutely false. You do not need a broad axe or a chipping axe. All you need is a felling axe. Because broad axes can go for over $100 cheapo ones, and so do ch uh, chipping axes. All you need is a felling axe and accuracy. Now, you see all these notches going along the log. This is called joggling. Now, this is the starting of the hewing process. I'm going to flip my log over here real quick. Don't know how well you can see. This is the chalk line. Now, if you want to make a straight line of joggles, you do need this chalk line. And you just do it from one end to the other, just like a regular board, uh, just like you would do regular lumber. All right. Now, to start the chalk line, I, you can't see it on this end, but I, uh, I have three lines. Uh, to start the uh, chalk line on and to make that really straight line I did it the old way and I used a traditional plum bobbin now you can find these uh, designs on the internet and you can find out how they work they're really really simple but good tool to use uh, really handy to have now the job wing is just really easy just like you would think you just notch it and on the bottom of the log I cut a flat piece off it has to keep it from rolling in the log rest now usually when you see people hew they have what they're called log dogs and they're basically gigantic staples made out of rebar and they nail it into the log and into this log to hold it in place but you could just do that and it'll hold just fine now when you got your joggles started I mean, just like I said, you just keep that going and you use the chalk line on the other side. And when you get to the chalk line, you stop the notch because then you know you've gone far enough. Now, when you got those joggles, you just either take your axe. Now, when you do this, please make sure that the axe can go between your legs because if you're standing like this, hey, come like this, you can cut your leg really bad and you don't want that. You either come down like this, there are actually two ways to do this. You could come down like this on the notch. Now one of the things that's really handy when you're hewing small logs like this, this is an eight foot, it's about, I think, six inches at the biggest end is having a light axe. If you have a two-bit filling axe and you're doing a log this big, you're going to be worn out before you even get halfway done. Now, I mean, you could maybe even do it on bigger logs too. Like I've seen a guy named Olaf Anderson. He had an axe that was about this much longer than mine. The head was only about this big. It wasn't a very big axe, and he did about an 18-foot log that was, uh, I think, a foot and a half at the base. So, you don't need... If you don't want to wear yourself out, you don't have a lot of strength, just get a small pack axe or something like that. And I could do this practically all day. In fact, I cut down this tree with this axe I'm using right now. Get that cleaned up. Turn it over. That's beauty without having log dogs. You could turn the log. That just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Now there is the first way 
going from the top down, or you can get on your knees and go from side to side. See, that usually takes a big chunk off. Now, you may be thinking, why have these little notches going all the way down the log? Well, imagine this was one solid piece of wood like this. Having these little notches, you have about this much wood that's being taken off. If this was one solid piece of wood, and you were trying to use a fro or an axe, you would get wood that's coming up here or diving deep into the wood. It's not straight, it's not flat, but with these little notches, you're making sure that you're only taking off that much wood. I mean, it's not, it takes practice, but it's actually not that hard to hew. It takes a lot of elbow grease and energy, but this actually is a practical way to do it. If you have time, you know, I spend money on gas, or Alaskan sawmill, or just handy sawmill. And you can make small things of timber, uh, lumber, not timber, and not that much time. And it's not just small scale stuff. Back then, like in Germany and stuff, there are barns that are 200 years old that are still standing, and they didn't even use nails in it. They used uh, tenons, which are like big wooden nails, basically. Uh, logs that are like 18 feet long, foot and a half wide and they hewed that use that for barns so I mean you could cut down a big tree and make a huge beam without even using a sawmill it takes a lot of time a lot of time and energy to do it but it can be done and um, right there you're just putting the hatchet head back down on the wood right yes on the handle yeah because uh, this one doesn't have a metal wedge in the top this is the type that you can um, take the head off and put a longer handle on because some people they like to um, let me put this down they like to stand on top of the log as a hue to do the notches like this and see how strong this log is I mean it's not very big I weigh I think 240 pounds and it's holding me and um, so this stuff becomes really strong but uh, now the thing about notching 